Yeah. I'm back tomorrow with Michelle Visage. Stay there for Sarah. This is Radio 2 on the BBC Sounds app, on your smart speaker, and on 88 and 91 FM. We're the BBC News at four o'clock. This is Jason Kay. Prince William's godmother has resigned as a royal aide after she repeatedly asked a black British charity boss where she was really from. Lady Susan Hussey made the comments during a reception at Buckingham Palace yesterday. Ngozi Fulani, who founded Sister Space, an organisation supporting victims of domestic violence, said she was totally stunned by the remarks. Our royal correspondent Sean Coughlin is following the story. A bystander who was also part of the conversation said the interaction was very offensive and unpleasant and unwelcoming. And they were both, they said, stunned into silence by this exchange. Now we know Buckingham Palace have responded very quickly. They've expressed great apologies and promised to investigate further. But it's a very embarrassing outcome for what should have been quite a positive event for them. More than 10,000 ambulance workers at nine NHS trusts across England and Wales have voted in favour of strike action in a dispute about pay. The announcement from the GMB union comes after Unison confirmed the paramedics and call handlers it represents in England would also walk out, possibly before Christmas. Separately, further disruption looks likely on the railways in the next few weeks. The TSSA union is planning action against strikes, uh, action including strikes at Network Rail and a number of train operators in December. The body of a newborn boy has been discovered at a recycling centre in Cambridgeshire. Police found the baby in a village of Waterbeach yesterday lunchtime. They've appealed to the mother to contact them, saying she may be vulnerable or need medical help. The government's asked to temporarily use police cells to hold inmates after what's been described as a sudden rise in the prison population in England and Wales. The Ministry of Justice says there's an increase of more than 800 prisoners in the last two months. The Conservative chair of the Commons Justice Committee, Bob Neill, has suggested a change in sentencing policy to ease pressure. Prison numbers have risen exponentially and maybe there's a case for us looking again at where it is appropriate to be holding non-violent offenders in custody as opposed to the dangerous people who we do need to lock up. HSBC will close 114 branches nationwide from next April as part of modernisation plans. It says there's been a decline in the number of customers going into banks, while the use of its app has almost tripled. Our business correspondent Caroline Davis reports. The decision means that around a quarter of HSBC's branches will close next year. The result, the bank says, of a move to online banking that accelerated during the pandemic. It says that footfall is down, with some branches seeing fewer than 250 people a week. According to the consumer group Which, banks and building societies have closed or scheduled the closure of more than 5,000 branches since January 2015, at a rate of 54 each month. The Harry Styles single, As It Was, has been named as the most streamed song in the UK this year. Spotify, Apple Music and Deezer all say the track has been their top performer. It's been streamed 1.5 billion times on Spotify alone. Now here's the Radio 2 Sport with Jonathan McKeith. The final round of Group D matches at the Qatar World Cup are underway. Australia are guaranteed to finish in the top two if they beat Denmark. France are already through and will top the group if they avoid defeat against Tunisia. Still to come this evening is the vital clash between Poland and Argentina to decide who will top Group C. A win for Argentina will see them through to the last 16. A draw will be enough as long as Saudi Arabia and Mexico draw. Both fixtures kick off from 7pm. Cricket and England's first test match in Pakistan for 17 years hangs in the balance this afternoon because of a virus circulating the tourist camp. 14 members of the party of players and coaches have been advised to rest at the hotel today rather than take a training session in Rawalpindi. The first test is due to get underway at 5am tomorrow morning. And Wales Rugby Union captain Siobhan Lillicrap has announced her retirement from international rugby at the age of 35. The Swansea native says she's loved her journey in the red jersey and is looking forward to enjoying some club rugby with Gloucester Heartprey. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing to you And thank you very much to Mr. Scott Mills for what can only be described as a magnificent radio show. I said I wouldn't cry, but.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and everyone in between, welcome along to your wise-cracking Wednesday Tea Time extravaganza. Get ready for me to squeeze the heck out of the next three hours till every last drop of fun juice has been extracted and you're thoroughly soaked with good times. Music, we've got pop, rock, pop, synth, pop, rock, jazz, hip-hop and do what plus features galore and a new glorious you on 88.291 as per. As it's a Wednesday, there's Jukebox Jam plus first and last a half. Wow, we're dressed to impress at the Sarah's and next, we see who's devoted plus some Thin fishy and soft scoop. I'm excited. And is excited. You know, Wimbledon is the pinnacle of of our sport of of, of tennis, so to win it, you know, is is, is a great achievement. Calm down. Music then. <laughs> 